This is Twit. Now, the FBI seems to think that they can just wish for a magical solution for them to get into your encrypted data, and somehow it will only be used by the good guys. Well, that's not really the case. And yet, they made that case again at Boston College this past Wednesday. FBI Director Christopher Wray once again referred to the, quote, going dark, unquote, problem that has become a nightmare in law enforcement, basically with the proliferation of strong easy-to-use encryption solutions that don't require any tech savvy, the FBI is saying that their job has become almost impossible. The iPhone lock from two years ago is just one example of this. They've got thousands of phones, thousands of devices, and just gigabytes and terabytes of encrypted communications that they'd love to have a gander at, but they claim that they just can't do it. They don't have the technical prowess to brute force that kind of encryption, and therefore they want some solution. They keep calling it some solution. And of course, we know that by some solution, what they really mean is encryption backdoor. Array is advocating for a key escrow system, which would allow the FBI or any other, uh, other authorized agency to bypass device encryption, giving, quote, a certain set of circumstances. Now, there was a lot of parsing going on with this because he said certain set of circumstances rather than a warrant. Most of the time when they've been demanding this, they've been saying, when there is a warrant issued for information on an individual or an organization, we should be able to decrypt that information so we can look for evidence of a crime. In this particular case, he specifically never mentioned warrant. He always used that term, certain set of circumstances, which has led some privacy experts to say he's expanding this. He's still asking for the encryption backdoor that the FBI has been asking for more than a year now. He's still saying that they're in this going dark problem. But now he's kind of saying, well, even if we don't have a warrant, if there's a certain set of circumstances, an extingent threat, then we should be able to just take a look at pretty much everything. Uh, we're definitely going to have to bring that up in the discussion. Now, this is not a new plea. We all know that the FBI has been strongly pushing for backdoors for at least two years. We've covered it here on This Week in Enterprise Tech. And they've been claiming that it's not impossible, even though every crypto ex expert has said the very fact that you put a backdoor in, into encryption means you are fundamentally breaking that encryption. Oh, by the way, Ray, referring to that exact off-claimed uh, um, backdoor would break encryption threat, has said, quote, I just don't buy the claim that it's impossible, unquote. Chibert, let me throw this over to you first. Both of us have worked for the U.S. government at one point or another, doing different things. Both of us respect the job that law enforcement does. Both of us understand that it's very difficult, and yes, they are trying to do something that does keep us safe. Do you buy this? Do you buy the whole... Well, when there is a, uh, a set of circumstances, and then and only then, will only the good guys look into your devices and your communications? No, I do not. Not even close. I've seen all kinds of misuses. And the sad fact is, we're human. Humans have, fall you know, I've seen good people do bad things for the right reason. I've seen bad people do good things, you know, whatever you want. The, the reality is, is if there is a way to backdoor an encryption system, someone is going to misuse it. Um, I just don't trust human nature. Uh, having said that, yeah, I am ex-law law enforcement kind of in a weird way. And I would love to support this, but I want it proven. I mean, proven by, say, opening it to at DEF CON. Hey, how, how's that for a concept? Opening it at DEF CON to a hackathon. And I would say it would have to survive multiple years before I would even consider trusting this. I think our FBI director is smoking something really good because I think he's wishing someone had a magic wand and do Levosa, Le, Le whatever, you know, Hermione did, you know, wave that magic wand, make it happen magically, because I think that's the only way it's going to happen in the foreseeable future. Right, right. Now, and the, the interesting thing about this whole debate is there, there are, there's a certain faction of our society 
that is claiming that if you do not want an encryption backdoor, if you do not want to support the FBI, if you do not want to support law enforcement by making it easier for them to sift through digital communications, then somehow that means you're an anarchist or somehow that means that you're not for the rule of law. That's that's simply not the case. Curtis, could, could you chime in on this? Because it, it does seem sometimes that that's, that's the argument. It's if you do not want to support your law enforcement by giving them this this authority and this tool, it means that you are trying to protect the bad guys. Well, I had an interesting conversation just this week on this very, very topic. I was researching a, an article that will run next week over on Dark Reading, and I had a chance to talk with Michael Chertoff, the first uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. And I specifically asked him about issues around encryption, and he was very clear that he does not think that there need to be any limits on the strength of encryption that can be used. He doesn't think there need to be any back doors into encryption because that inherently weakens the encryption. Uh, this is someone who I think we can say has thought about security uh, issues at the very highest level, and he sees that the benefit of having truly strong, highly resistant encryption available to individuals and corporations outweighs the potential good to law enforcement that could come to, to having weaker or broken encryption. To me, that, that was a critical moment when, when, I, when I got him on record talking about that. Um, do I wish that we could come up with uh, an algorithmically sound way to allow uh, some type of access after appropriate judicial review? Well, sure I do, and, and I'm, I've been at this too long to use the word impossible lightly, but I have yet to see such a, an algorithmic approach that would do that and frankly, uh, I would be absolutely stunned if one were developed within the next decade or so. Yeah, it's a, and I think both you and Chibert have really nailed the major issues here. Uh, and, and let's start with the, the human concept here that, that Chibert brought up. I can imagine that not too long ago there was this exact sort of discussion when they were setting up the FISA courts. And the whole idea is, well, this is only going to be used when it absolutely is necessary. It's only going to be used when we really, really need it. And now the abuse of that system has been well documented. It's the same thing with this. This idea of having a secure key enclave. This where all of the secrets are held and they'll only be used when they're absolutely necessary makes sense as long as there are no humans in the loop. Because the minute that there are humans in the loop, you're going to have bias. You're going to have people who are acting out of their personal feelings or out of a political motivation and that just that doesn't work